EPA TRICARE for Life and Federal Employer Health Benefits presentation. As we get started today, I would like to introduce the platform that we will be using, which is the Hopin Navigation. First off, I'd like to call your attention to the number one box over here on the left. And the little wheel at the top is Hopin's logo. You can just ignore that. The second thing is the house, which is the reception area, which is where everyone enters. The second um, or third little icon is a camera, and that is the stage. And when we go to the stage, why we will be live and that will be blue. And then when we go to the um, expo after the presentation, the little tent will light up. The second thing I'd like to call to your attention is the box on the right, which is a two, and that is where you can put information on the chat if you have questions. To type information or questions to us or to put in comments, do that in number three. Now, as you can see, we have entered the stage. The blue camera has come on, and when I start to speak, this will light up with my um, information. The chat is the same as well as the box number three if you want to write any comments or questions. The next box or form as you can see is the expo. This again the little blue tent is white or is blue and then you can see the exhibitors and the outside of their booth. So today we have Kaiser Integrity Insurance and Humana with us. Um, again, over here on the right, you can see the little chat boxes. When you enter the booth, then you click on the outside of the booth and you will get this blank form. If someone is at the booth, then you will see their picture. As you can see over here on the right, the number two has come on and the box has changed to booth. There's chats and polls. And you can again put information into the chat. You can ask us questions. Um, there's a little bit of information here about the booth itself. Um, and if you are wanting to ask for additional information, click on box number four and that company will send you information. If you want to visit any of the booths, click on number three and that will let you in. With that, let's go ahead and start on our lunch and learns for um, today. The first thing we wanna do is talk a little bit about Medicare Part A and D. A is hospital insurance, B is medical insurance, D is prescription drugs, and Part C is Medicare Advantage, which is optional. It's important to know that Medicare has parts A, B, C, D, and we supplement that with Medicare Advantage plans, Medicare supplement plans, or prescription drug plans. So we supplement with plans. The premiums for A, B, C, and D, A is mostly free for benefit beneficiaries, B has premiums paid by the beneficiary, C is optional if you enroll, and D has premiums if you sign up. We're gonna start out this today with veterans benefits. The first question to ask is who is eligible for VA and Medicare? First off, you have to have served in any branch of the military. You have to be age 65 with an honorable discharge. The VA has eight priority groups based on income, disability, and service that you have provided, years of service, time of service, as well as service-connected service disability. You will fit into one or more of those categories based on your individual situation. Based on your priority area, then there may or may not be co-pays and out-of-pocket expenses. We're gonna start this morning looking a little bit at enrollment in Medicare. And this is going to be true whether you are in the VA, whether you are in TRICARE, or whether you are in the Federal Employee Health Benefit or FEBA. So Part A hospital, the initial enrollment, if you're on Social Security, you're gonna automatically get it at age 65. 
If not enrolled in Social Security, then go to Social My Social Security, open an account, and sign up for Medicare. It is free. If for some reason or other you do not sign up three months before you turn 65, the month you turn 65, or three months afterwards, and you have employer coverage, you may want to apply for a special enrollment period. You do that by sending your Medicare card back to Social Security. You will get a new card that enrolls you only in Medicare Part A. When you exercise your special enrollment period, your Part A should be free. If for some reason or other you miss the initial enrollment period or you do not have a special enrollment period, you may be eligible for a general enrollment period. That starts January 1 to March 31 of each year with coverage to begin July 1. To sign up for a My Social Security account or to sign up for Medicare, either go to their website at ssa.gov, call 1-800-772-1213 or visit a local social security office, although they are primarily closed at this time during the pandemic. Similar to enrolling for Part A, you enroll in Part B in a very similar way. At age 65, you're automatically enrolled if you're getting Social Security. If not, then follow the same process. Go to socialsecurity.gov, open an account, and sign up for Part B. The monthly premium is expected to be somewhere between $146 and $153 in 2021. The same rules for special enrollment for Part A apply to Part B. And if you miss the Part B, then you might be eligible through a general enrollment period and follow the same process. On a Part D enrollment in Medicare, you can enroll in a Part D or prescription drug benefit at age 65. However, the Veterans Administration prescription drug formulary and benefit is comparable to the Medicare prescription drug formulary and benefit. So you do not need to enroll in a Part D. However, some people do enroll in Part B, Part D, simply because they need some drugs that are not on the VA formulary, but might be on a Part D formulary. Because, Medic because VA has um, a formulary that is comparable to Medicare, they have what's called credible coverage, and you, would do, you do not need a special enrollment period. If you miss, for some reason or other, the initial or the special enrollment period, follow the same process for an enrollment in general uh, enrollment. The late enrollment penalties, again, are the same for VA, TRICARE, or for FEBA. So the VA encourages everyone to sign up um, at age 65, and there's no penalty. If you sign up for the special enrollment period and you do it correctly, then there's no penalty. If you do it incorrectly, then there is a 10% per year penalty for every year that you do not enroll in B. Because the VA um, has credible coverage, there's no penalty for any kind of late enrollment. And as we said previously, it's not mandatory that you enroll in a Part D plan if you want to take advantage of the VA services. In terms of prescription drugs, um, if we compare the VA services to the prescription drug plan, basically the VA pharmacy benefit, there's no premium. There may be a copay depending on your um, level or your tier, and you have to get the prescription drugs at either through mail order or a VA pharmacy. If you choose to do a Part D plan, those drugs you will have a monthly premium for unless you qualify for assistance. Um, you usually will have a copay depending on the tier and you have to get those drugs at participating uh, prescription drug network pharmacies. 
You also may find that you need to select a prescription drug plan every year, depending on the plan that you choose. In terms of the VA and primary private health insurance, uh, we wanna look a moment at coordination of benefits. The most important thing to know is that even though you are, it is suggested that you sign up for Medicare, both A and B, if you have Medicare coverage, um, you, what? Um, even though it, I'm sorry for the interruption. Um, even though you sign up for Medicare <clears throat> or a private health insurance and, and the VA suggests that you sign up for Medicare Part A and B, um, or VA does not bill Medicare. So they only want you to do that for two reasons. One is that if you need coverage outside of the VA system, or if for some reason or other, the Congress does not appropriate enough funds for the VA to provide care for all veterans. Um, again, a private health insurance is not necessary. However, um, if you do enroll in a private health insurance, such as a Medicare supplement, then the VA is required to bill them initially. And then if they pay, you would have to pay whatever uh, the VA or your supplement does not cover. And you normally would have to pay what Medicare pays. The other thing that depends in terms of who's gonna pay, whether it's the VA or Medicare, VA pays if you are at a VA medical center or VA location, or if you are in a prior authorized facility that is not a VA uh, hospital or care center. If, you, if Medicare pays, then they're gonna pay if you are not at a VA approved facility or a care setting. The VA in terms of a Part C or a Medicare supplement, um, you can get a Medicare Advantage. Um, it does allow you to get additional services like preventive services, vision, hearing, chronic disease management services. Um, you do have to pay out of pocket for the, any of those expenses. Um, and you would have to use Medicare Advantage network providers, you may or may not have a monthly premium. If you do decide to sign up for a Medicare supplement, if you receive Part A or Part B services in a non-VA setting and you have a supplement, that supplement will pay. You can then go to any provider in the United States that accepts Medicare and your monthly premium is going to vary based on your age and the plan that you purchase. Now let us take a few moments and switch to TRICARE. This is available to individuals who have served 20 years or more in the, any branch of the military. Um, you have to be age 65 because that's the basis to get Medicare. To be honorably discharged, you have to be registered with the DEER system. This is especially true for um, divorced individuals if one or the other spouse was in the military for 20 years or more and you get a divorce afterwards, you can still continue oftentimes with your TRICARE coverage. You also do in the TRICARE world have to be enrolled in Part A and Part B. The initial enrollment or Part A coverage, uh, you have to be eligible um, and you have to receive services. Uh, the process in terms of initial enrollment, special enrollments or general enrollments is exactly the same as it was under the VA and you have to receive it to receive services under TRICARE. Similarly for medical benefits or Part B, it's exactly the same um, as it was under the VA for the initial special and general enrollment and you do have to have Part B coverage to be eligible for TRICARE. The penalties also for late enrollment in Part B, there's no enrollment if you sign up at 65 or if you have a special enrollment. If you lose your special enrollment and you have to go to a general 
enrollment, again, the penalty is the same 10% per year for every year that you do not enroll. In terms of Medicare Part D, the prescription drug plan for TRICARE is credible coverage, meaning again, that just the same as in the VA system, the formulary for TRICARE meets the same criteria as the Medicare prescription drug benefits. So you have credible coverage. You do not need to enroll in a Part D plan. You can if you want to. And if you do, you should either enroll at your initial enrollment or you can enroll during the annual enrollment period between October 15th and December the 7th. So the question is who pays for um, prescription drugs, TRICARE or Medicare? And that is really dependent on where you get it. So Medicare pays if you go to a participating um, Medicare physician. If you go to um, a TRICARE physician, as well. So Medicare pays basically if um, Medicare pays first, TRICARE pays second so on both A and B. If you go to a non-participating uh, provider, again, Medicare will pay first uh, and TRICARE pays second. Um, and then you have to pay uh, whatever the charges are that Medicare and TRICARE do not pay. If you go to an opt-out provider who does not bill Medicare, then TRICARE will pay whatever they would normally pay if it was a Medicare approved visit. And then you will have to pay whatever the Medicare amount was and whatever the balance is. TRICARE for Life also offers dental and vision benefits and you should review the plan to see if you are eligible for those. If you decide that you want to sign up for a Medicare Advantage or a Part C, uh, Medicare Advantage does have some benefits that TRICARE does not offer. However, you do have to use the MA network providers, but again, you do not need their prescription drug benefit. Um, the coordination of benefits between Medicare and TRICARE is that TRICARE will basically pay any deductibles, co-insurances, or co-pays that your Medicare Advantage does not pay. You can continue to use your TRICARE benefit. Um, if the MA plan does not pay for it and TRICARE does, then TRICARE will pay first and then you pay the balance. If you have TRICARE with employer coverage or a Medicare supplement, um, it really depends. You have to check with the uh, employer or retiree coverage to see if A, you have credible coverage, and then if they will pay primary or secondary. Um, TRICARE will pay secondary if your employer pays uh, primary. Um, and if your employer is going to pay secondary, then Medicare will pay first, the employer will pay secondary, and then TRICARE will pay. Um, there is a coordination of benefits. And if you do have an employer coverage, you do have to file your own claims with TRICARE. If you decide to purchase a Medicare supplement, then Medicare is going to pay first, the supplement is going to pay, and then TRICARE is going to pay any balance and similarly, you will have to file for paper claims. Now let us switch to the Federal Health Employee Benefits or FEBA. Our best advice is to consult with the Office of Personnel Management, but we'll go through a couple of um, highlights that you will want to know. So again, the initial special and general enrollment periods are exactly the same as they were for VA and for TRICARE, for both Part A as well as Part B. You can though both coordinate with FEBA, there's an advantages to signing up for both FEBA as well as Medicare because oftentimes what Medicare doesn't pay, FEBA will and vice versa. Uh, so you can often avoid any kind of out-of-pocket expenses. 
The penalties, again, if you do not sign up for the initial enrollment and you miss a special enrollment period are 10% per year for every year you do not enroll. You can, with FEBA, enroll in a Part C or a Medicare Advantage. Again, it is optional, but you do have to be enrolled in A and B of Medicare. Similarly, if you exercise a special enrollment period, you also have to be enrolled in A and B. If you did not qualify for the enrollment period, you missed the initial enrollment, you missed the special enrollment, then you would use the general enrollment period. If you decide to enroll in a Medicare Advantage plan, it is suggested that you suspend your FEBA, but rather and rather not totally terminate it, because if you terminate your FEBA, most likely you would never be able to get it back. Um, in terms of the prescription drug plans for Part D and FEBA, most federal employees do not need to enroll in the prescription drug program since all the FEBA plans have uh, prescription drug coverage and it is credible coverage. The next thing I want to do is spend just a couple of minutes on Medicare Part C, Medicare Advantage, comparing that to a Medicare supplement as well as Medicare Part D. So a Medicare Part C or a Medicare Advantage plan is run by private insurance companies. They negotiate directly with Medicare for a benefit package. They receive a capitated amount every month for every member that is enrolled. They approve the services as well as the care that is provided, and they contract with individual providers or companies to provide those services. The, there are five different types of Medicare plans that are offered in Colorado, an HMO, a PPO, a private fee for service, a special needs plan, and a DSNP. And um, there are then different variations among those plans. The DSNP is only available to individuals who are on both Medicare and Medicaid. Um, Usually you have to use their providers. You usually have to get a referral to a specialist. You have to select um, a, medic, a primary care physician. If you go outside of the network, there's additional fees or no payment. Um, they have limited hearing, vision, and dental services. They focus a lot on chronic disease management and prevention, and they make all of the decisions. This is a list of the companies that are offering Medicare Advantage plans in Colorado this year, in 2021. Not all companies are offering services in every zip code. So if you are interested in signing up with a particular company, check with the company to see if they are available in your zip code. Now a few brief words about Medicare supplements, because if you buy a Medicare Advantage, you do not need a Medicare supplement. If you buy a Medicare supplement, you do not need a Medicare Advantage. A Medicare supplement basically is a guaranteed issue the first six months after you enroll. The company cannot deny you coverage or drop you regardless of how many claims you have or how much money you uh, have spent. There are standardized plans, and those are the same regardless of the company that you purchase them from. The Medicare supplements are regulated by the Colorado Division of Insurance. Um, you, the provider, the doctor, or the hospital submit the claim to Medicare. Medicare pays it, submits it to the Medicare supplement company, and if there's any balance due, then that bill is sent to you by the provider. You can use any provider in the United States that accepts um, Medicare. Uh, you do not need a referral. You can self-referral. These are the standard plans offered by Medicare supplements. As you can see, A, B, C, D, F, F plus G, G plus K, L, M, and N. As of January 1, 2020, C, F, and F plus can no longer be sold. Um, if you want to switch from a C to a D, an F to a G, or an F plus to a G plus, um, you can do that because they are no longer being sold.
from January 1, 2021 to June 30th, 2021. Um, this is a Colorado rule, not necessarily true in all other states in the country. Um, on the list left over here, we see the different um, benefits that a Medicare supplement must pay. So they have to, most of them have to pay the deductibles, some pay the coinsurance, um, the excess charges, the skilled rehab stays, and um, the Part B costs. This is a list of the companies that are selling Plan G uh, in 2021. And regardless of the company that you select, the plans are the same. In terms of Medicare Part D, this is the standard benefit for 2021. So the annual deductible is $445. The initial coverage limit, uh, you have to pay about $1,000 out of a $4,000 retail cost of prescriptions or about 25%. After you pay out $1,400, you go into the coverage or the donut hole or the coverage gap. Um, and after the retail cost of the drugs is $10,000, of which you pay 25% of that for both generic and name brands, then you go into catastrophic. And so basically after the total cost of your drugs at the retail pharmacy is $10,000, then you go into catastrophic and then your out-of-pocket expense depends on whether or not you use a generic or a name brand. On a generic, you pay $3.70. If the retail price is under $74, if it's over $74, you pay 5%. If you're using a brand name, it's you pay $9.20 if the retail price is less than $184. If it's over $184, um, then you pay 5% of the cost. This can get kind of um, expensive for out-of-pocket costs, especially if you have a drug, say, that costs $8,000 a month. 5% of that would be $400. This is the list of companies that are selling prescription drug plans in Colorado in 2021. They all have to sell in every zip code in Colorado. So with that, I'd like to just do a quick review or um, a summary of do you need to enroll in Medicare A, B, C, D, or a Medicare supplement, depending on whether you have a veterans benefit, TRICARE, or FEBA. If you, for a Part A hospital, the answer is yes. Uh, you should enroll um, for sure in TRICARE, uh, highly recommended for VA and FEBA. Part B for medical, again, yes for TRICARE, highly recommended for veterans and FEBA. Medicare Advantage is not necessary for VA. It's optional for TRICARE and FEBA. Make sure that you follow the rules. A uh, prescription drug, it could supplement your VA, but it is not necessary. And you do not need to enroll in a D for TRICARE and FEBA. You have a Medicare supplement. Um, it's pretty much not necessary for any of these plans, although you could sign up if you want to. And with that, I would like to close that part of the presentation. Um, we have put together some resources for you. If you would like a goodie bag, send us your name, address, and telephone number to cogs at senioranswers.org, and we'll send you uh, one in the mail. If you have previously requested uh, one, we are uh, those have been put in the mail, um, and so you don't need to request another one. They contain basic information and items that you would receive if you were with us in person. We have also put together some additional resources um, on our Medicare on the porch. Uh, simply pull into the driveway, grab a bag, um, and those will be available um, again on November 9th and 16th. You can get one at Holly Creek at 5500 East Peak View Avenue in Centennial or come by our office at 1129 Pennsylvania in Denver. 
We also have a toolkit, which includes some individual counseling, both by our experts, as well as the University of Colorado School of Pharmacy students. We can help you with almost any question regarding coverage, uh, enrolling in a plan uh, D plan, looking at your pl uh, plan C benefits, um, et cetera. We can also make an appointment for you with the uh, students. They will do drug reviews as well as counseling on the different drug uh, plans. Their uh, appointments are available via Zoom and their appointments available between 5 and 6.30 on November 4 and 5. Other things in the toolkit, we highly recommend that you review the Medicare website. Um, contains a lot of information, including the Medicare and You book, the Medicare Plan Finder, which uh, is where you will do research if you decide that you want to sign up for a Part D plan. It's also where you would enroll in MyMedicare.gov, um, and this is the website that helps you to track your utilization of Medicare benefits and Medicare services. My Social Security is where you enroll in Medicare.gov or in Medicare. Uh, we also have available the Medicare Drug Insurance and You uh, newspaper that the Colorado Division of Insurance puts out, and that's available either through a link or you can get uh, hard copies of that. We have information available to you from our sponsors, which include Humana, Integrity Insurance, and Kaiser Permanente, as well as Cigna. If you want a list of all of the Medicare supplements, Medicare Advantage plans or prescription drug plans that sell in Colorado, go to medicare.gov. At this time, we would invite you to visit representatives and experts um, on Medicare in our expo hall. Remember to click on the navigation bar on the left uh, on the little tent, and that will take you to the expo. Um, and then click on the outside uh, of the booth, which is their logo. Click on the inside and you should be able to visit and or talk with representatives. If you have questions, put those in the chat. Um, thank you for your attendance today. If you have any questions, please feel free to call us at 303-333-3482. If you need assistance in Spanish, please call our office and we will link you with our Director of Latino Services. Um, and if you have any questions, you can also uh, send us an email at cogs at senioranswers.org. Thank you for your participation.